was happily thinking I was retired. Um, I mean, that's why I left Fleetwood Mac originally, is because I just simply, you know, after 30, 35 years or whatever it is, of doing that, I just thought there's got to be something else out there, you know, something else. I wanted to move to England. I was actually obsessed to move to England. And uh, I'd already told the band this was definitely going to be my last tour, the dance tour. And uh, there was a lot of general kind of people trying to bend my arm to, to stay, but I just, I was compelled to come back here, you know, back to England. And uh, nothing would, would stop me. And I, and I just thought, well, I think I could quite happily be a country lady and just look after dogs. And, and it's funny how things happen because I, I, I suppose it's because of what I, I'd done all my life is that suddenly the, the, the desire to write songs kind of trickled back into my life again. Not that I really would want to tour or go on the road again or anything, but I think once you've once you've been writing all your life, it's part of it. It's what you do. It's like if you're a sculptress or a, I don't know, a banker or whatever it is. You go on doing it, don't you? What else do you do? Oh, I think so. I think I yeah, I think I've cemented my Wellingtons to the to the floor. I really, uh, I love it here. As soon as I got here, and I knew I'd moved here for good, I just felt right. It's hard to, do, to explain. It's like a compulsion to come home. Um, after living in L.A. for 25-odd years. I, and I was the one, when we went out there, with early, in the early fleet of that days, during the bogus Clifford Davis band, you know, era, um, and I and they said we're only going for six months. I said I don't want to go. I don't want to live in America. And they, and they said, uh, well, we're just we're not going to stay there. And of course, we we just never came back. And I, I said, you know, obviously made lots of friends over there and developed somewhat of roots. And uh, I don't know. I think it was just I think it was the big earthquake that really did it for me. The one in '94, the big one in LA. And I, th I think that was it. And I just said, I've got, I just have to go home. It still took me five years to finally move back here. But no, I have had no regrets. I've, LA's been great to me. But uh, you know, this is home. I love it. Writing music, that's how I, I find my self-expression. Other people do other things. They find other means of expressing themselves. And, and I suppose uh, there must have been something bottling up inside me for me to even want to write again. Because you think, what on earth? There's nothing. There was a, t a time when I was completely dry of ideas. And I'm sure all writers go through that. Um, and then suddenly things, the desire to write something comes back. And you just have to give in to that. Why not? The trouble is, it's what you do afterwards that it becomes a problem. What am I going to do with these songs? I can shelve them or I can do something with them. Yeah, I mean, that was literally written, I think, in about half an hour. And I just put it on a little cassette recorder and uh, I thought, well, perhaps I should put a drum machine on it or something. You know how things ch transpire. And so I called Dan, my nephew, and I said, do you, do you fancy putting a bit of acoustic guitar on this? So he came down one afternoon and he did that. Dan's very good with the computer. So as things moved along, we, we had a lot of fun together, just writing in a very low-key kind of way. And uh, we were getting more of a, a laugh and fun out of it than anything, which is what it should be. And... You know, as the months rolled on, there was getting quite a list of songs together, and we thought, well, shall we make a record, or shall, what should we do? And we decided, in the end, long story short, to get uh, a bass player and a drummer, which were recorded in Los Angeles. And, uh, and then when we, we did a bit of recording in the studio over here, and then we did most of the rest of it. We, we did all the sort of the cream on top and all the icing and everything else and uh, here in this room. I'm surprised there's even this one, to be honest with you. I, I, 
I've, I've had terrific memories. I do have terrific memories of making the last record, solo record. But it wasn't something that I'd really sort of been aching to do on a regular basis. Uh, I enjoyed the, the group experience. I had enjoyed the group experience. Um, but this time it just was different, I suppose, because Dan and I really did do it, the, the bulk of it. I mean, it's, it's, I think it's over time it's taken about 20 months to make. But with no particular, there was no time limit, there was no deadline. So we just did it, you know, a couple of days a week here and there. And it just felt really relaxed and laid back because we could just work at our own pace. And literally there was just nobody else here, just the two of us. So we we just had a laugh with it. And I really enjoyed making the record that way. Sometimes I don't play the piano for weeks. Sometimes, I hate to say it, but months. And uh, it depends. I'll have a fit where I, I really fancy, because I have music in the house, you know, sort of sheet music, and classical, classical music and all kinds of stuff, Christmas carols, of course. And uh, sometimes it's a really great pleasure to sit at the piano on a rainy afternoon like this, for example, and, and plow my way through a bit of Mozart. It may take me three days, but it's really nice to sort of try to remember how to cite me. But I don't do it. Uh, I don't do it religiously. No. At this stage, no, not not. To my certain knowledge, I don't know quite how this is all going to roll at the, at the present moment. See what happens when the record gets out. I'm, I'm really not sure how we're going to go about this at the moment. Um, I don't really know. I played a few roughs to Mick, and he lo he loved them. He loved what he heard. I haven't really seen them. I've seen I saw Mick when he was in London. And that was a, a good year ago. Uh, but I haven't seen any of the others. I never feel that far away for, from them. I mean, I think that the five of us have a really, even though I'm not there anymore, I do feel a tremendous draw to them. I can't, there's not a day when I don't think about Fleetwood Mac. And I don't think about that. Mick and John, and uh, Mick and John in particular, because they go back so far. Yes, I, and you, you're right. It's it's a strange thing, but I mean, I I, I almost can predict what John and Mick are going to play, even Lindsay to a degree. I can I can sense them when we're playing on stage. I could. And uh, it's a sort of, not a premonition, but it's a, it's a sort of a certain knowledge of people that you just, it's just something that, that gives you goosebumps, and I don't know what that is. You're right, you do play with a lot of very able musicians, I have, and it doesn't, doesn't feel the same. <laughs> 